I, I just don't know what to make of it. That's why I decided to call you, Doctor. The way Henry's been acting lately, it's just... Hello, Doctor. Feeling well? Hello, Emily. Not feeling well? You uh, say he's had this trouble before? Yes. The last time was several years ago. You know, when everything was so hard to get, Henry had a terrible time. Then he was all right for a while, wasn't he? Oh, yes. He's been getting along beautifully with people. But then, just the other night, the whole thing started over again when we were having dinner at a little restaurant that used to be one of Henry's favorite places. Henry's such a meek man that people often ignore him, just as that waitress did. You folks decided what you want yet? Yes, thank you. It was, uh, 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 uh It was roast duck. That's what I said, candy. yes. Roast duck, yes. Roast duck. Roast please. duck? Some applesauce, maybe, and, uh... I just served the last order to that party over there. They came in after we did. Well, I can't help that. We got some fish left. Ducks, fish, what's the difference? They both swim. When our food finally came, it was stone cold. And then Henry discovered she hadn't brought him any lemon. After he'd asked her twice. All I want, Emily, is just one little slice of lemon. If that waitress would just realize how little it takes to make me happy, if the owner of this place only knew how easy it is to make people feel welcome in his place of business, the... There's your lemon, mister. Oh, oh. thank you. <laughs> Henry, for a man who shot all the lions and tigers you have, you certainly don't get much respect in a restaurant. You know what you remind me of sometimes? Mouse. <laughs> Doctor, the strangest look came over his face. And then he pulled a little black book out of his pocket and started to mark in it. Now, Emily, I can't see any cause for alarm in that. Lots of men keep track of the places where they've been badly treated, so they'll remember not to go there anymore. Oh, no, that isn't it, Doctor. Let me tell you about the next time. He was buying a suit. And as you know, Henry is very conservative about his clothes. I tell you, I want Oxford Gray. Oxford Gray. Mac, this is what everyone's wearing nowadays. Oxford Gray? Well, I tell you, people would laugh at you. There, look at that fit across the shoulder. Perfect. And look at that fit in front. Perfect. Doesn't even need any alterations. Except maybe the sleeves. Now, let's look at the pants. Is there another pair of trousers? I always want two pairs. Two pair of pants for that price? Say, when did you buy your last suit anyway? Well, I think it was about last June. <clears throat> no, I do not like the suit. I, 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 I... I was supposed to meet him at the store, and by the time I got there, he was simply furious. He got that, that expression on his face again. Then he started putting things down in the notebook, drawing a picture. Well, really, Emily, I can't see why you're so upset. It's probably just a natural release for his pent-up feelings. After all, the salesman insulted his taste and good judgment. Make matters worse, he browbeat him in an argument. There, you see, I know he's up to something. I've been sure of it ever since yesterday when we went marketing. Next. Have you any nice, clean pork chops? Um, I got these. They're not very lean, are they? Well, that's what I got. 
One of these chickens for Bryce. Well, hello, Mrs. Bates. Uh, what can I do for you? You could give me some nice, lean pork chops. Well, I, I've been saving a few just in case you came in. By the time I got through with my shopping at the bakery, he was in an argument about price. Oh, the sign said 60 cents a pound, and this is a five pound chicken. Now you tell me it's four dollars? Yeah, but 60 a pound is for those scrawny old hens. You picked out a good chicken. Naturally, you don't expect to get it at the same price, do you? So when I found the book this morning on the whole table, I just thought you ought to have a look at it, Doctor. After all, you've been Henry's doctor and friend for a long time. Mm. Even so, I didn't know Henry was such an artist. Our butcher, playing favorites, price juggling, a boor. My dollar is worth just as much as anybody's dollar. If he had been honest about prices, he would have made a sale instead of losing one. But what on earth does he mean by over the gun rack? Waitress at the B restaurant. Ignored us. Careless service. Impertinent. I'm easy to please. All I ask is a little attention and a bit of friendliness. Over the bookcase. Over the bookcase? <laughs> Salesman at Brown's Van Store. A show off. Too smart. Hmm. Henry thinks this man would be better off if he paid more attention to what the customer wants. Over the mantle. Seems the Henry's had plenty of trouble. <clears throat> hmm. Hometown Motor Company, serviceman. Said they would have car ready by noon. When I got there, they hadn't even started to work on it. I had to wait two hours. I know exactly what he means. And it isn't just the service department either. I remember when I bought my last new car. I got just about the same kind of treatment that Henry got in the restaurant. I wasn't buying pork chops. I was buying an automobile, a major investment. Yet I practically had to take the car away from him. Are you all right? You have an accident? All right, yes, dear. Accident? Thanks, old man. Just had one. Henry, what are you doing? I'm going to take that bear's head down from over the bookcase. Oh, dear. Over the bookcase. Over the mantel. Over the gun rack. A public service, my dear. Oh, I think I'm going to faint. Oh, wait, Emma. Before you do, let me get you another tear. Uh, thanks, Doctor. I need this one to get these heads down before the stores close tonight. By the way, Doctor, I'd like to know what you think of my project. Just, uh, what is your project? Well, sir, Bad-mannered people sometimes remind me of animals. Now, I've met a few bad-mannered animals, uh, people in business lately. And this afternoon, they're going to remember only too well that they've met me. Now, it's not just the butcher and the baker and the candlestick maker either. I think that everybody in all businesses in these times ought to pay attention to the way they treat people. Now, this afternoon, I'm going to give these animal heads to some people I know. They'll be a good reminder of the right way to keep friends to keep business, no matter how hard times may be or what may come. This first one is to a waitress I know. Only a bear can afford to hibernate when customers are waiting. It's easy to be nice to people, and it only takes a little bit of attention to make them feel welcome. Now, this would help remind that restaurant owner, too, that his customers judge him by the people who work for him. Now. This is going to a salesman I know. Don't be a smart shark. Know your product, but let the customer tell you what he wants. And of course, 
That would be good advice for any salesman. Now, this applies to lots of people in business, but it's going to our butcher. Boers and boars have this in common. They have few friends. It takes lots of friendly customers to stay in business. You make friends by treating people right. I've got some ideas about people who act like animals myself. Emily, get out of that chair. I'm going to work. <coughs> That is, if you don't mind my joining in, Henry. Not at all, Doctor, not at all. Henry, I don't think we've got enough heads to go around. Every business and professional man in town ought to have one to keep him reminded of the fact that there's no such thing as doing business without the customer. That no matter what kind of product or service he sells, his success depends on getting along with people. In fact, I know I need a reminder myself once in a while not to be a bear or a boar or a shark. <laughs> Henry, I want to go along with you. <laughs>